The L Word Generation Q season three totally and utterly failed. The vast majority of audiences panned the show. Critics didn't like it. The cast didn't like it. People who speak about it on social media and YouTube didn't like it. And the show just was universally panned. There was so many comments on social media talking about the issues with season three of Gen Q and today I'm going to be talking about what I think are the top 10 reasons that season three just didn't work. Hi guys, this is just a quick note to say I would really, really, really appreciate you watching this all the way through because this is actually a re-upload. Showtime blocked this video yesterday. They've never done that in the three years that I've covered the L word, but they obviously didn't like what I had to say in this video. They went in and manually claimed it, which is pretty much unheard of when it comes to short clips like the ones that I've used, but they're not even actually clips. I've used the visual clip as b-roll for less than nine seconds which is textbook fair use it's completely transformed and what showtime basically did is they told youtube that what i had uploaded basically this video is no different than someone uploading an entire episode of the l word of course that's completely untrue and i have disputed it it can take up to 30 days so that's why i wanted to re-upload it because that's what showtime is trying to do they're, they're just trying to get the video taken down me to shut up and if i do re-upload it they know that it won't get as many views because some people will have seen it already when it was up yesterday for about an hour Hour. so I would really really appreciate you watching all the way through thank you so much and thank you to everybody who has like sent messages and like said something to Showtime because I mean trying to do this to like a tiny creator really is that really you know the hill you want to die on you really want to look this way because shooting down a tiny lesbian creator come on do better the first one is of course storyline. There was so many drop storylines this season and one of the only ones that I think worked, there was so many that didn't work and were just disappointing to quote a cast member. They actually only really had the Bet and Tina storyline that worked and that wasn't even like the writer or the showrunner's decision because as we know, I mean maybe they had to give the ultimate green light but there wasn't really their creation or their drive behind it because we all know that was Jennifer Beals and Laura Holloman and also Showtime getting behind it was because of the fan push behind it and so many of the fans and people being on social media. I mean, that happened with the original show with Eileen Chaikin and saying Bet and Tina were supposed to break up and be done for good. And it happened again with Generation Q. Like it was this fan drive that ultimately did sway over Showtime. So so when you look at the Bet and Tina stuff and that it was so driven by Jennifer Beals and Laurel Holloman and the fact that Jennifer Beals is actually writing some of the Bet stuff, that's wild. So take that away and like what is season three? Because pretty much anything positive I've seen about season three and I talk to a lot of L word people, I see a lot of comments, I see a lot of people on social media and I actively go and look other places. Like I look on Showtime's social media accounts, I look on the cast, I look on the showrunners and pretty much anything positive is Bet and Tina and anything else is just people angry upset and disappointed so my second point is character development and this is just another one that didn't happen nothing really went anywhere because there just wasn't hardly any character development we had little bits with people like Finley and Carrie and it was nice to see those scenes that was one of the highlights of the season for me was like the Carrie and Finley stuff but pretty much everybody else I mean there was I guess character development when it came to like the Gigi and Nat stuff but it was just the worst kind of character development because it it wasn't actually development it was just like strange and awful decisions that went back on like all the previous character development and then we had characters like Danny who seemed to get like personality transplants and all these other things like Alice didn't have 
any character development and actually just everybody was like a different person this season alice was like super segregated from everyone and she also was kind of like selfish this season shane had like absolutely nothing to do so like no the, the ogs they didn't get anything like I said, Danny and Gigi, just bizarre personality switches. And then the other characters, you really didn't have time for anything because you were just filled with like these holiday episodes, musicals and guest stars, which I'll talk more about in a minute. So I don't think people will be surprised to see this on my list, but number three is the timeline. The pure laziness of the timeline. There is a point in the Thanksgiving episode where Angie says to Shane, oh yeah, like we started dating around like September, October, whatever that show was. And it's like for them to not go back and see that the date they used was the 27th of September or they were too lazy to do that or they went back and saw that they already fucked up the timeline in the first episode how can you not in 10 episodes establish a timeline like not one season has had a timeline at all and they should probably just go back to what they did in season one and remove like any references to dates at all because season two it was a fucking mess season three it was an even bigger mess so number four is Bettina and oh, just more of what I said before they just I think couldn't get out of their own way and by they I mean like the writers that they had this really good thing that could have been developed and been this a really amazing storyline and they they just either didn't want to do it or didn't want to give it the time it was owed because when we get to like the later episodes too Bet and Tina were very much relegated to like the sidelines like they weren't even the main characters in their own wedding and I do have an entire point that just talks about the season finale and the wedding so I'll talk more about that at the end there's just so much they could have done with this and that obviously they had Jennifer Beals and Laurel Holloman and even if everything else had to stay the same like they could only be in four episodes they really could have killed it with those four episodes and and I mean Laura Holman and Jennifer Beals obviously killed it I mean in the sense that they could have had these great scenes like in episode two which to me was the best episode of the season they had that Alice Shane Bet and Tina scene like why did we not have more of those why did we not have any apart from like the little tiny bit with the whole like cake thing in that last episode why like it's just crazy to me absolutely crazy that this is what they did with the time that they had these fantastic actors that are literally fan favorites like the main people in the show that they gave them these little tiny minutes and I know that there's tons of stuff that they've cut as I said I'll talk more about the wedding and the season finale in the last point number five is the group scenes and I kind of touched on this with the Bet, Tina, Alice and Shane scenes that well scene singular there was no other ones and again just absolute fucking madness also there was so many episodes after Bet and Tina left that Shane and Alice had basically a handful of scenes over those like all those middle episodes that Bet and Tina weren't in why oh why would you not have your two leads your two OGs have the most scenes possible and have some sort of interactions they barely had anything like the next episode episode four after Gigi had left Alice didn't even leave her house and again we had the Joey Lauren Adams character for three episodes and for what I'll talk more about guest stars in a second but even the group scenes the very few that there were with the Gen Q characters there's just not that dynamic there's not that charisma there's not that whether it's casting writing or most likely some sort of mixture of the two it just really doesn't feel the same and it feels so constructed and or orchestrated I can't connect with it in any way shape or form like when I see the Gen Q characters together I I just don't 
I don't feel anything like I feel like Finley and Carrie like I love that dynamic and like when Misty came in that to me was really fun but when I see everybody else like that scene where they're in the bungalow when like Finley comes back and stuff and or Danny comes back Sophie brings Danny back it doesn't make me in any way excited or to feel in any way that like oh yes all the friends are together but I felt everything in that scene in Dana's where it was Alice, Shane, Bet and Tina, that four of them, I just, I love that scene so much. It, it was probably outside of the Bet chasing after Tina, like that to me was the best scene of Gen Q because it's, I think, the only scene where like all four of them are together for some significant time. When I think about it, it just makes me so fucking angry too because I'm like, as Kate said last week in Pants, it didn't have to be this way. Like, and I've I've said this for over a year now, we really could have had it fucking all. Like we really could have and it just got so screwed up. So the next thing is pacing and this kind of relates to like the holiday episodes and the musical and stuff and I have said I thought it would be cool to have a holiday episode but that's because I wanted like Alice and Shane doing Halloween, Bet and Tina doing Christmas, whereas this was like Sophie and Danny in terrible costumes and they told us in the beginning like oh this is gonna be like Halloween hijinks and nothing fucking happened like episode four was one of the worst episodes of the season I really I, I think it also was like Gigi had gone Bet and Tina had gone and it was a really poorly written episode and when it comes to also the musical, you're telling me there's a 10 episode season and you have two holiday episodes and a musical, like a show like Grey's Anatomy or Buffy, both amazing shows, they wouldn't do three episodes like that, filler episodes in a 24 episode season. And you're doing it in a 10 episode season. You should not be doing any of those things in a 10 episode season because there's too much character development and storyline that you should be covering in those 10 episodes. That's why shows like eight to 10 episodes are so popular at the moment because it's just like there's always something going on and there's no filler. Like shows like The Last of Us and pretty much anything on HBO, that's why they work because there is so much going on and so much action and just you know, the story's always being driven forward, whereas they just treat Generation Q like, oh, how do we get to the next episode? And to say things like, oh, you can write Generation Q episodes in 60 minutes, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And they also follow this like monotonous, monotonous, like schedule sort of thing where it's like there's an event and it drives everyone together and so and it's like I don't want to watch fucking like oh a chimpanzee could like fill in like oh and then the characters all meet at this location and there's an event everybody watching can like can deconstruct your formula it's really not like that secret and that's not what we want to watch like I want excitement I want like fun friendship romance I want the L word with a new spin with new characters I do not want my time wasted with the same thing every fucking week with like just a different event number seven is not upholding the dynamic of the og and i mean this could cover so so many things but the main point is that this is the l word generation q and i know some people will say like oh you just want the original characters you just want the original all over again and it's like no that's not what i want like i understand that this is a different show but you have to also respect that it is the L word Generation Q because if they wanted to just do Generation Q, I mean, good luck to you because there's no way that that would be greenlit without the L word part. But this is the L word Generation Q and there are original characters in it and they even brought more of them back this season. And I will say there were like all the OGs that came back, I loved all all three of them coming back like it was great I loved Max Dana and Tasha there was a lot of stuff that it didn't seem to like go in line with 
what happened on the original because Dana and Alice and Tasha and Alice, like they kind of tried to make the Tasha and Alice thing less than what it was and the Dana and Alice thing more than what it was. And there's so many other things I could point to here and say like, this is wrong and this is wrong and you know that. But I, I really think that everything can be surmised by what happened in my friend Jess Rothschild's interview with Marja Lewis Ryan because what she said in that interview was honestly the most batshit thing I have ever ever heard when it comes to like television and writing and stuff because Jess asked Marja have your writers have they seen the original show not only could Marja not say yes but she said she didn't know So after a season of writing with these people, she still didn't know if they had seen the original. And to me, that just says and explains pretty much everything. Number eight is the guest stars. And pretty much this could be surmised by what happened in the finale where they hyped up all the people that were going to guest star and made it seem like, you know, some people who Bettina actually knew might be at Bettina's wedding. And that obviously wasn't the case. We got like some random celesbian guest stars. And I think that was just the season as a whole. Like that was actually the first point I became worried about the season was when I went to the Gen Q set and I asked Marsha what she was most excited for for the season and she told me guest stars. And the guest stars, while guest stars can be a great thing, there was so many this season that it just like the holiday episodes and the musical episodes, it was just filling time and buying time because there was no storylines or character development and why you would have so many guest stars in a season where there is a huge cast already is absolutely crazy to me. Number nine, Gigi. I mean, what can I say that I haven't already or others haven't already? Gigi Gorbani was the perfect casting, the perfect character. She was the light of Generation Q, the only person who could have held her own on the original and could be the star, the lead of Generation Q and carry the show and was the only person, couple with Danny that could rival, and not rival really, but be a Bet and Tina because people absolutely loved, connected, felt that like charisma and magic when Gigi was on screen. And obviously that's down to the actress that portrayed her, Seppi Moafi. To lose, it's not only that they lost Gigi, But the way that they treated her, they had her have this personality, I don't know, scramble. And also the fact that they wrote her off the show in the most like degrade, like having oranges thrown at her car after they've completely redconned the actual relationship of Danny and Gigi. It's just, it's embarrassing. And then to not speak about it for seven weeks and not say anything that the actress wasn't on the show anymore for seven weeks, all to lead up to one fucking line in the finale. What the hell are they thinking? It's really like they make decisions and think, what is the worst possible angle, the worst possible decision we can make here so that we make people as angry as possible? Like, Everything about how they wrote Gigi out of the show was just so unbelievably gross. Like everything about it, so disrespectful to the actress, to like the character, to the fans. Everything about it was just honestly, I I still can't believe that they did this. And finally, the season finale, what an absolute disaster. I mean, I'm sure people have seen my reaction to the season finale. I was so fucking angry. I still am so fucking angry. Like, I just cannot believe that 
that is what they were hyping that is what they were telling me this is so amazing like we don't want to spoil anything blah, blah 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 i feel sorry for the ogs that they had to go through this of course leisha killed it directing and i would love to see her director's cut of this but just everything about the finale again it's like they make decisions thinking what is the worst thing we can do here because for bet and tina to not be in basically in their own wedding they're relegated to like side characters but it's the fact they had all this like drama and like chaos and stupidness because why was this necessary why was it necessary to have danny like rolling molly at bet and tina's wedding i mean this was 20 years in the making and this was such a moment and one of the reasons this was such a moment is because when the original l word came out this wasn't even possible and wasn't even legal and look how far we've come like people i've had bet and tina in my life since i was like 16 years old like they mean a lot to people and just to have that representation on tv and also it looks as though this is the series finale so to do all of this for the end it's just so so upsetting and so gross and so i don't even have words anymore because everything about it like why would you do this why would you have these awful decisions and have characters like making a fool out of themselves you know i know tv shows are supposed to have drama and you know they want to keep people interested but there are certain things that you should just let people have it. Like just let people have one good episode with the most famous lesbian couple there is on the most famous lesbian show there is. Okay, there's not a lot of them, but why couldn't we just have this? Why couldn't we just have one episode with one wedding, one good moment of them like riding off into the sunset? There is just absolutely absolutely no way they could explain this finale or this season to me that would make sense because although they're going to be mitigating circumstances to some of these things and you know decisions or budgets or this is the way they had to shoot this and they only had this time to do it yeah that will explain like little bits here and there but that doesn't explain the laziness the storyline fuck-ups the character development the dis just poor decision after poor decision and this will always anger me and always leave a bad taste in my mouth does that all mean that i want the show cancelled of course not i do want a season four but only if there are seismic and fundamental changes because this show will always be important it will always be necessary because unless we you know catapult into a, a different world where we get good representation which i just don't think will happen that's why the show will be important but there needs to be changes there needs to be basically a cleaning of the house and that is when maybe you'd be able to do a soft reboot and just move things in a different direction because there are so many roots that have been laid down now that just it's it's not possible to to move this show forward without big changes so i want to hear from you guys what do you think the main issues with season three are do you want a season four what do you think is gonna happen i mean i think we should find out soon ish because when i was talking to cast and crew when i was at the watch party they said it would be about a month hopefully so we should find out i guess in the next week or so but let me know down below what you think what's going to happen don't forget to subscribe as i'll still be talking about the l word and other women loving women shows don't forget also to follow me on social media i do have a patreon a discord links for everything are in the description box down below along with all my social media and as always make sure to stay safe take care of yourselves and i'll see you in the next one bye guys